a very good day to all of you computer shiksha is supported by you will be learning something new in today's class but before doing that let us revise what we did in the previous class can you tell why we use the maximum formula with the help of the maximum formula you can find the maximum value from within your data can you tell why we use the minimum formula with the help of the minimum formula you can get the minimum value from within your data can you tell what is the difference between normal and page break preview you can see your entire sheet in the normal view whereas in the page break preview you can only see the sheet till where you have your data now all of you switch on your computer and using the method taught to you open your file let us now see what you are going to learn in this class what you will learn today is about manual breaks cells rows column sheet sheet from file hyperlink function function list and then towards the end you will learn about some of the chart options then you will also learn about the formulas for if and or count and count blank firstly make a table or open a file that you may have saved earlier let us now learn about manual break can you tell why in spreadsheets we use manual break by using manual break in spreadsheet you can divide your column or row whenever you break a column or row you will not be able to print that part if you want to remove the manual break then you need to go to the edit menu and use the delete manual break manual option let us now watch the video and learn more about using the manual break the manual break will help us in breaking row or column on our sheet and then we can see them on separate pages and print them also so to choose the row break we first need to select the row where we want to put a row break take your pointer to the insert option of the menu bar left click on that and then bring your pointer to manual break you will see two options row break column break so let's click on row break to insert a row break so you can see a line appears just below the a row or the second row so a row break has been inserted right now we can see only a line in the sheet and we don't see that these are two separate pages so to view the two separate pages we will have to do a page view so we take our pointer to the file option click there and then click on page preview so when, once you click on page preview you will see that the top part of our sheet appears on the first page as is shown here in the video and if we scroll down this sheet you will see the second page also coming where the rest of the data is appearing so this way you have used manual break to break to insert a row break on your sheet you can close this preview by clicking on close preview and you come back to your normal view now if you want to insert a column break let's first select where we want to insert the column break take the pointer to insert menu option of the menu bar left click on that 
and then come to manual break and click on column break. So as soon as you insert on column break, you see another line on the column which you had selected. Again, right now in this sheet, you can only see a line and uh, when you see in the page preview, you will see separate pages have been inserted. So you can take your pointer once again to the file option of the menu bar, left click on that and then click on the page preview. So as soon as you click on page preview, you see that the first part of the column, which is before the column break insert where we have inserted, appears on the first page. Then if we scroll down, you can see the other data is appearing in the other page, in the second page. You can close this preview to come back to your normal page. So this way you can use the manual break to insert row break or column break on your sheet. In order to remove the manual break, you take your pointer to the edit menu and click there. Once you click there, look, you will see so many options. Look for the option for delete manual break and click on that and your manual breaks are removed from your sheet. As you can see in the video, the manual breaks which you had inserted for the row and the column. First, we'll have to click on column break because that option is visible because we have not selected row break option right now. So once we click on column break, the column break will go away. Next, if we want to also remove the row break, we have to first select where we had inserted the row break, select that cell, then again take your pointer to the edit menu, click on that and then click on delete manual break option and your row break will also be deleted. Let us now learn about the cells option. Can you tell why we use the cells option? With the cells option, you can insert a new cell in your sheet or bring up a new cell. You will use the shortcut command control plus plus for inserting cells. With the help of the video, let us learn the usage of the cell option. With the help of this video, we will now see how we can use the cells option to insert cells on our sheet. So we first select where we want the new cell to be inserted. As is being shown in the video, we have selected the B2 cell where we want to insert a new cell. So in the A row, match 56 marks. Then we take a pointer to the insert option, click there and then click on cells. You can also use the shortcut command control plus plus to insert cells on your sheet. As soon as you click there, a box opens which has many options which is asking you whether after inserting you want to shift the present cells which are already there, you want to shift them down or you want to shift cells on the right side or do you want to insert an entire row or do you want to insert an entire column. So right now we are selecting shift cells down and press on OK. So you will see that a new cell gets inserted in the B2 cell space and the other cells which were already existing they have moved down. So this way you can use the cells option to insert cells on your sheet. Let us next learn about the row option. Can you tell why we use the row option? With the help of the row option, you can insert a row on your sheet. 
Let us learn more about using the row option by watching the video. Let us now see how we can use the row option. So with the row option, you can insert row, a row in your sheet. First, select the cell where you want to insert the row. As in the video, we have selected the B2 cell. Then take your pointer to insert, left click on that, and then left click on the rows option. As soon as you left click on the rows option, you will see that a new row has been inserted at the second place in where you had kept the pointer. Now you can work in this row, like we have typed a new name, AB, and we are giving some new marks for the student, Math 63, English 64, Art 66. So this way, you can use the row option to insert rows in your sheet. Let us next learn about the column option. Do you know why we use the column option? With the column option, you can insert more columns in your sheet. Learn more about using the column option from the video. With this video, let us now see how we can use the insert column or the column option. So first, select the column where you want to insert. Take your pointer to the insert menu, left click on it and then left click on the columns option. As soon as you click on it, you will see that a new column has been inserted where we had selected a cell. So we can use this column as the other columns we have used. So let's, we are using this to type the roll number and we can type the roll numbers here like 1, 2, 3, 4 as is being shown in the video. Remember that when you want to insert the column, you must first select a cell where you on the sheet where you want to insert the new column. This way you can insert any number of columns. Let us now learn about the sheet option. Can you tell why we use the sheet option? With the sheet option, you can bring up many sheets. However, before using the sheet option, you must know before which sheet and after which sheet you want to insert a new sheet. Watch the video and learn about the sheet option. With the help of this video, we will now see how we can use the sheet option to insert new sheets. So, to insert a new sheet on your existing sheet or in your file, Calci file, take the pointer to the insert option, left click on that and then click on the sheet option. As soon as you click on the sheet option, you will find a box opening which is asking you for the position, whether you want to insert the sheet before the current sheet that you are using or after the current sheet that you are using. Then you can also select how many new sheets you want. So we want to insert after the current sheet, sheet number one that we are using. So we select that option, click on OK and you see a new sheet has been inserted as sheet four after the sheet one. You can see this in the video. If you look at the bottom, sheet four, this is sheet four, blank sheet. So if you click back on sheet one, that is the sheet that you were working on. So this way, you can use the sheet option to insert more sheets in your Calci file. And you should know where you want to insert before or after and how many sheets you want to insert. You will now learn about sheet from file option. Do you know why we use the sheet from file option? With the sheet from file option, you can pick a sheet from a file that you had saved earlier and bring it to your sheet. Learn more about the sheet from file option from the video being shown. Let us now see how the sheet 
from file option is used. So, with sheet for from file, you can get a sheet from a file which you had already saved earlier in your Calci file. To do this, take your pointer to the insert menu, left click on that, and then click on the sheet from file option. When you click there, you will see a box opens which asks you for where you want to insert and where you want to insert the file from. So, here you should know where your file is saved. So, you can scroll up and down in the address box to find where your file is located. So, if, for instance, if it is in desktop, we will click on the desktop option and from amongst the files which are shown to you, you should know which file you are looking for. So, in this case, we have selected spreadsheet 1. Within that also, there are many files. So, we select class 1 and in class 1, there is another Calci file which is called class 1 itself. So, we select that and then we click on open and you see that the three sheets which are available in class 1 are shown in this bottom preview window from file sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3. So, you have to click on the file sheet that you want since you want only the sheet 1 and you want it before the current sheet, before the sheet that you are using already which in your Calci file is called sheet 1. So, you will click on OK and you will see that the sheet from the file gets inserted before our sheet 1 in our Calci file. So, if you look carefully, this is the new sheet which, which has got inserted from the saved file. If you look in the bottom, it says sheet 1 underscore 2. So, it, this is the sheet which has come from an existing saved file and it has been inserted before sheet 1 of your Calci file. So, you can click on sheet 1 and your Calci file sheet 1 is already there and a new sheet, sheet 1 underscore 2 has been inserted before sheet 1. Do you know why we use the hyperlink? As you have already learned in the writer and impress modules, using the hyperlink, you can link your file to another file and open and use that file. Now, by using the hyperlink, all of you open the saved Calci file and if you face a problem, watch the video. Let us now see how using the hyperlink option, we can insert a hyperlink to a file that we have already saved on our Calci sheet. So, first select the cell where you want to apply the hyperlink by clicking on that cell. Take your pointer to the insert option, left click on that and then click on the hyperlink option. As soon as you click on the hyperlink option, a box opens which asks you for the location from where you want to link the file. So, in this, you can click on the open file option or the icon and now you have an address bar and you have various locations where your file may be existing on your Calci sheet. So, if we, we can select desktop and open a file from here or depending on where our file is, we can select various other locations in the address bar. Maybe our file is in the documents, so we can select documents. Then we can scroll up and down and see all the files and pick the file, select the file which we want. And then after selecting it, click on open. So as soon as you click on open, you can see that the path has been inserted there. Now if you want to, instead of the path being shown there, if you want to put a text or you want to put a different name, just come to this text box option and you can type any name. We are typing hyperlink. We just say 
click on apply and then we click on close so this box gets closed and you can see that your hyperlink by the name of hyperlink itself has come on your calci sheet the name could have been any name it could be your name also so now to open this as you know you have to first place the pointer on the hyperlink then hold the control key with your left hand and press on the left button of your mouse or touchpad and the hyperlink file opens now you can work on this hyperlink file while you are still in your calci sheet since we don't want this file right now we can just click on the close button here to close this and we come back to our sheet the calci sheet which we were working on so this is how you can apply a hyperlink on your calci sheet and open and use that file let us now learn about the function option can you tell why we use the function option the function option of the spreadsheet is a very important option because you can view all the formulas in the spreadsheet and use them watch the video and learn more about the function option with this video we will now see how the function option is useful for our spreadsheet with the function option you can look at all the functions available in your calci sheet or the formulas that you want to use so bring your pointer to insert click on that and then click on the function option as soon as you click on the function option a box opens which shows you all the functions which are available so there are many functions and you can scroll up or down to see the other functions and the formulas available if you look on top here it shows category so right now all is selected but if you click on the drop down button you can see you can choose databases date and time financial functions etc so if we click on structure whatever formula we have selected we can know more about its structure so going back to functions we can select any of the functions that we want to use and in this preview window you can see that you can apply the formula and select so if you click next the function which was selected is shown here and you can also know more about this function so if we click if we put put a number 50 and click on okay so you will see that the function's answer is applied to the cell that we had selected so this way you can use the function option to know about the functions the next option is for the function list can you tell why we use the function list with the help of the function list you can see all the formulas in a list and can make use of them with the help of the video let us learn more about the function list with the help of this video let us see the use of the function list option with the function list option you can see all the functions easily on your sheet take your pointer to the insert option click there and then click on the function list as soon as you click on the function list the list of all the functions that are available for use to you on the calci sheet appears on the right side of your sheet so you can have mathematical functions financial functions all the other functions are available here you can scroll up and down and use the function which you want on your sheet so this way it is all the functions are easily available to you if you want to delete this function list once again take your op pointer to the insert option and click again on the function list and the function list will be hidden so this is how you can use the function list option on your calci sheet you will next learn about the chart option 
can you tell why we use the chart option in Calci? By using the chart option, you can view your data in a graphical form. Also, with the help of chart option, you can compare one row with another. For example, when you are shown a comparison between two cricket teams, it is a type of chart. You can also call the chart as graph. With the help of the video, let us now start learning about the chart option. In this video, we will see how the chart option is used to see our data in a chart. So, if you want to represent the data in a easy to use chart, which is very clearly visible in in the form of a chart, just take first select the data that you want to convert or show in a chart. So, we want all the marks to be shown in a chart. So, that is why we have selected all the students A, B till E and all their marks. Take the pointer to insert and then click on the chart option. As soon as you click on the chart option, a box opens and it shows you the different types of charts available. So, the steps for this are the chart type and in this you can choose a chart type. For instance, you can have it in columns or bars. As soon as you select from this range, you can see the preview and you can see how the chart will appear. So, it can be column, bar, pie chart, area chart, line, x, y, bubble, net, like that. There are various options of the chart type that you want to use. Let us select the pie chart, which is an easy to use and easy to see representation. So, we choose the pie chart and then if we click on next, it will show you the data range. Once again, if you click on the next, you will see data series. You will be learning more about these later. Next will also show you chart elements. Just click on finish and you can see the chart has been prepared from your data. So, you can see the color AB is the dark blue color. Then for A student, the red color has been used. For B, the yellow color has been used. So, you can see the variation is shown in this pie chart in different, uh, different sizes. Ba based on their marks, the total marks, you can see the differences. So, this way you can prepare a chart and insert it also on your sheet to see the data in a easy to understand picture or a chart. You will now learn about some more formulas like if, and, or, count and count blank. Can you tell why is the if formula used? The if formula is an easy but very important formula. It is a conditional formula and it can perform a logical test and return true or false result. For example, you can compare between pass and fail. Let us now watch the video to learn more about the use of the IF formula. With the help of this video, we are now going to see how we can apply the IF conditional formula. So, to apply if we already have data on our sheet, the data is regarding the marks for Maths English Arts. So, first let us do the totals of these marks. So, bring the pointer to the F2 cell and select it by clicking on it. And then let us apply the addition formula or the formula for the sum which all of you know is equal to sum 
then begin bracket and then select all these marks by dragging your pointer so the all three marks are there and then the bracket close and then press enter and you get the answer 193 now just click back on the cell where you have added or got the sum and keeping the pointer on the black dot drag it downwards for all the rows so that the same formula is used for all these rows and the total for all the rows is available to us. Now in column G, we are going to apply the if formula. So let's write the heading if in the first row in G1 cell. Now in G2 cell, that is where we will apply the if formula. So let us now write the formula for if. The formula for if is, as you know, all formulas begin with equal to sign. So we type equal to and then we type if. If then we begin the bracket with shift 9 key and then we first have to select the value that we want to check. So we have selected 193, the total for second row or for AB student. Then we put a condition. So we are saying if this 193 is greater than. So we put the greater than sign. And then we put a value here if it's greater than 185. Now we have to apply these statements. If this happens, if it is greater than 185, then what? So first you type a semicolon. Then to type the statement here we need to use inverted commas so look for inverted commas on the keyboard and then type pass so if this 193 total is greater than 185 then it will say pass close the inverted commas once again apply or type in the semicolon and then write the second statement if it is not greater than, then show fail. So we have to type inverted commas and then F A I L fail and close the inverted commas. Once again, now close the bracket. So it is important that you use all of them the beginning of the bracket, the end of the bracket, the semicolons in between, and the two statements and the conditional statement. Now just press enter and if this total is greater than 185, you will see pass written here in this cell. Next, we have to apply the same formula to the other rows of the G column. So we just copy the formula downwards by pressing on the dot and then dragging the pointer downwards so that the formula is applied and you can see all the answers come there. So this way we are going to now apply the same formula for pass. It showed pass because all the marks which are greater than 185 have been shown as pass like 190, 189. But any marks which were less than 185 like 130, 184 and 181 are shown as fail. So this is how you will apply the if conditional formula on your sheet. We will now learn about the AND formula. With the help of the AND formula, you can check two values. If the value for both is found correct, then your answer is shown as true. And otherwise, is shown as false answer. Let us now learn how to use the AND formula by watching this video. We are now going to learn how the AND formula is applied on our Calci sheet. The AND formula compares two values. If both are true, then it will say true. If even one is false, it will give a result of false. Now, 
in h column we want to use the and formula so in the h column in the first row which is the title row let's type and a and d and then in the h2 cell we want to apply the and formula so to apply and formula select the cell and then begin with equal to as with all formulas we have to type equal to and then for and formula we just have to type a and d begin bracket and as you can see for this you need a logical value first value then the second value so for the first value we are selecting the arts marks for student a b which is 66 which is in the e2 cell so you can see e2 is written so let's apply a condition that if e2 is greater than the english marks which is in the d2 column so we put e2 after e2 we put the greater than sign and then select the english marks which is in d2 64 as you know this is true 66 is more than 64 now put a semicolon for the second statement or the second condition and in the second condition we are selecting the total marks for ab which is in f2 which is actually 193 so we are saying 193 is less than and we have to select another value so we are selecting the arts marks which is in e2 which is actually 66 so you know that 193 less than 66 is a false statement so if you close the bracket here so one statement is true the first statement is true e2 is greater than d2 but f2 is less than e2 is a false statement so once you close the bracket and press enter you will see the answer becomes as false once again let's use the and formula with different conditions or different statements in the h3 cell so first select the here we are just showing you in the video that the and formula was applied the first statement was e2 greater than d2 so e2 was 66 and d2 was 64 so this was a true statement 66 is greater than 64 but the second condition was f2 less than e2 now f2 is 193 and e2 is 66 so 193 is less than 66 is a false statement so even if one of the statements is false the answer will be false in the and condition let's apply and again here in h3 cell so we type equal to and begin bracket and for the first condition let's select the marks for arts which is 65 and it's in e3 cell so we select this then apply the condition if e3 is greater than and this time we are going to use d4 we so we are using we are comparing it with somebody else's marks so we have applied this condition if e3 is greater than d4 as you know e3 is 65 and d4 is 62 so this is true now put a semicolon and now write the second condition or the second statement let's select 130 which is the total for a a row and we are saying condition is less than so if f3 is less than 60 the e3 so here you can see 130 is less than 65 is false so once we put the bracket close the bracket and press enter this will also show, show a false statement you can once again click on this false where the false answer has come to see the formula and 
see that in this formula, the conditions were E3 greater than D4. So, E3, which is 65, was greater than D4, which is 62. So, this was true. But the second statement, where F3, which is 130, is less than E3, which is 65. So, this was false. So, you can see this. So, one statement was true, the other was false. So, the answer we got was false. Because in AND, if one statement is true and the other is false, you will only get a false answer. Now, let's change the second statement. Instead of saying F3 less than E3, let's take the condition of F3 being greater than E3. Now, you see F3 is 130 and E3 is 65. So, this is true. So, now both the statements are true. So, once again, when you press enter, it gives you the true answer. So, this is how you can use the AND formula and apply the conditions on the AND formula on your Calci sheet. Next, you will learn about the OR formula. With the help of the OR formula, you can check two values and even if one of them is correct, then it will be shown as true answer. Let us now learn the usage of the OR formula with this video. Let us now see the usage of the OR formula. In the OR formula, if there are many conditions, if one of those conditions is true and the rest are false, it will show as true. So, let us first write the heading in the I column for OR. So, OR, we just type in the heading first row and then in the I2 cell, where we want to apply the OR formula, we write the formula here. So, begin with equal to and then OR is for OR formula. Then begin bracket and as soon as you start with the begin bracket, it shows you that you now have to write the logical value 1 separated by semicolon and logical value 2. So, the first statement, we are selecting the F2 which is the total marks 193 and the condition we are applying is F2 greater than the E2 marks, the arts mark which are 66 which you know is a true statement. 193 is indeed greater than 66. Then we put a semicolon. Now we apply the second condition. We are again selecting F2, 193. And this time we are saying F2 less than E2, which is 66. So 193 is not less than 66. So this is a false statement. So then we close the bracket. Now we have one true statement and one false statement. So, when we press enter here, since this is the formula for OR, it will show as true. In the AND formula, all the statements were required to be correct. Only then it will be shown as true. But in the OR formula, if there are many conditions, we can click on this cell and once again see the formula. So, we had F2 greater than E2 which was 193 greater than 66. This statement or this condition was correct or true. But F2 less than E2, 193 less than 66 is false. So, even if one of the conditions is true, the answer will be shown as true as is being shown here. So, this is how you will be using the OR formula for conditions to be applied on your sheet. Next, let us learn about the count formula. With the help of the count formula, you can see on how many cells you have worked upon in your sheet. And you can get a count of these cells. With the help of the video, let us now see the usage of the count formula. Let us now see how the count formula is applied on our Calci sheet. So, firstly, Select the column where you want to use the count formula. 
So we have selected the J column. So in J one cell, let's write count C O U N T. And then in J two cell, let's write the count formula. So to write any formula, we have to begin with by selecting that cell first. So select that cell and then type equal to and then write count C O U N T and then begin bracket which is shift and nine key and you can see you have to now choose the value one two three four whichever values you want so we can just select where we have done some work so we are selecting right from A one cell to G eight cell. as you can see in the video so it what it will do is it will count all the cells where some work has been done close the bracket and then press enter and you will see that it counts all the cells where some work is done and gives you a figure which is 30 so from a1 cell till g8 cell the cells that you had selected only on 30 cells some work has been done this is how you use the count formula let us now learn about the count blank formula count blank helps you in knowing how many cells are blank in your selected sheet watch the video and learn more about count blank formula let us now see the usage of the count blank formula the count blank formula will give you the range of the cells will give you the number of cells which are not used in the range that you select so first let's select a column where we want to use the count blank since we want to use it in the k column you can use the scroll bar at the bottom of your sheet to show the k column as is being shown in the video then in the title a column or the first row type count blank and in k2 let's type the formula for count blank which is equal to and then you have to type the word count blank c o u n t b l a n k and then begin bracket and as soon as you begin the bracket it shows you the values which are required for the count black formula as it says you have to type now the range so you can select the range again we want to select the a range from a1 cell this one a1 till g8 so let's just drag it and select till g8 so it will count all the cells which are blank and give you the answer there so uh, we have to now close the bracket and then press enter so as soon as you press enter it gives you the answer which in this case is 7 so there are blank cells in this range from a1 to g8 you can see in the last row eighth row there were many cells which were blank so it gives you it counts those cells and shows you the answer of a count blank as 7 so this is how you will use the count blank formula on your calc sheet now all of you so how you will change your file to pdf format since we end today's class here all of you save your file and then close the file and also properly shut down your computer so what you learned in today's class was about manual breaks cells rows column sheet sheet from file hyperlink function function list and then towards the end you also learned about some of the chart options
and then you also learnt about the formulas for if and or count and count blank computer shiksha is supported by thank you